Hey everyone, welcome back. Initially, I actually didn't have any plans to go and see the Barbie movie. I was only interested in seeing Oppenheimer. However, after I saw this tweet about how blatantly feminist and man-hating the film was, I got curious about just how mask-off Hollywood was willing to go regarding a film that they were, they seemed to be at least banking on to be a big moneymaker hit for them. The marketing of this film was interesting in the sense that they seemed to wish to disguise just how feminist this film actually is. Robbie Brenner, executive producer of Mattel Films and one of the architects behind the company's push to bring Barbie to the silver screen, explicitly noted that Barbie is not a feminist film. It really did seem like a lot of viewers expected to watch a film based on classic Barbie, perhaps with a few notes of feminism and political correctness, because these things are practically a given in Hollywood nowadays, but certainly not a film that is radically feminist, anti-man, anti-masculinity, and even anti-motherhood. Suffice to say, the film's messaging was even more harmful, subversive, and logically incoherent than even I expected it to be. On that note, there are going to be spoilers in this video, so if you were not interested in hearing any spoilers, then please click away now. The plot of Barbie begins in the matriarchal Barbie land, a world completely run by female Barbies. The president, the Supreme Court, the doctors, the scientists, the construction workers, Nobel Peace Prize winners, etc., all of them are women. As for the men of Barbie land, referred to as Kens, they are regarded as side pieces to the Barbies. They have no personality or personal ambition of their own apart from flirting with and trying to impress the Barbies. Despite this great effort from the Kens, not even one of the Barbies likes the Kens in a romantic way. They essentially just tolerate them. At one point, Margot Robbie's Barbie character even refers to Ryan Gosling's Ken as superfluous. And yes, this is obviously meant to represent the feminist notion that men only value women for how they look. There is no more value there. Hence why the Kens are reduced to this in the matriarchal Barbie land. And it really is very strange because as a viewer, we are meant to applaud the societal structure of the matriarchy. We are meant to believe that it is just and virtuous even for women to control absolutely everything while the men just play the role of window dressing. And at the very same time, we are meant to find the real world, which Barbie eventually travels to, a completely despicable and revolting place due to the fact that it is a patriarchy. Ken, who travels to the real world along with Barbie, is inspired by the patriarchal society of the real world and decides to transform Barbie land into a patriarchy as well, which we as viewers are meant to find abhorrent due to the fact that only women should rule, only matriarchies are allowed, not men or patriarchies. And naturally, since any woman in her right mind would never choose to submit to a man, the Kens have to resort to brainwashing the Barbies in order to get them to submit to them, which manifests in the Barbies dressing in skimpy outfits and serving the Kens beer, or listening to the Kens play guitar, or the Kens explaining to the Barbies why movies like The Godfather are so great. The only male Barbie who doesn't turn against the female Barbies is a male Barbie called Alan, played by Michael Cera, who very obviously represents the male feminist who supports a woman-led matriarchal society. I'll pause here for just a moment because it is very clear that this film's interpretation of masculinity is extremely superficial, to the point that it almost comes off as if they are mocking masculinity. In the Ken's patriarchy, all of them are versions of the eternal male adolescent. They are all playboys with Peter Pan syndrome, who never wish to grow up or take on any sort of genuine responsibility, or even to work hard to accomplish their goals. Instead, they are the kind of men who spend their days playing video games, working out at the gym, and fawning over expensive of cars, while the women are only valued for their looks and serve them cold beers and skimpy clothes all day. This modern and deeply flawed interpretation of masculinity is more accurately and ironically the type of masculinity that you'd find in a matriarchy. Men whose one true motivation, the motivation that they are completely dominated and enslaved by, is their desire for sex and access to women. Traditional masculinity, on the other hand, is when men have self-discipline, when they are not a slave to their vices, when they have control over their urges and their lower passions, and when they do their very best to persevere in what is good and right. I should add that it's not only the Kens that the movie paints as brainless imbeciles. Every single man in the real world is portrayed the exact same way. Two of the characters, a human mother and daughter, are the owners of Margot Robbie's Barbie doll in the real world, and they travel to Barbie land to try to help her. It's interesting because initially the daughter criticizes Barbie as a symbol of the 
sexualization of women, rampant consumerism, and even fascism. But as soon as they arrive in Barbie land and the daughter realizes Barbie land was a matriarchy completely run by women, at least before the Kens took over, she funnily enough has no more criticism for the Barbies. The girl's mother, played by America Ferreira, manages to break the Barbies from the brainwashing spell of the Kens in the most cringeworthy way possible. She basically sits each Barbie down and gives her an impassioned speech about how unfair and difficult life is for women. That no matter what we do, we can never get it right in the eyes of male-dominated society and are regarded as failures. And this very unsurprisingly falls completely flat given the fact that Barbie Land was for 99.9% .9 of its existence a female-run matriarchy that genuinely did treat the men like brainless and unimportant pieces of garbage. America Ferreira's character helps each Barbie to remember that they are strong and independent women. They are authors, doctors, politicians, Nobel Peace Prize winners, and so on. And this realization gives them the motivation that they need to defeat the Kens and restore the feminist matriarchy to Barbie land. The daughter then thanks Barbie for being a white savior, but Barbie tells her no, it wasn't her who saved Barbie land, but her mother. Because of course in 2023 there's a popular trend of taking digs at white people. Ultimately Margot Robbie's Barbie decides that she wants to become human and to live in the real world because she wants to live a life doing meaningful things, which is an incomprehensible ending for a few reasons. Firstly, the Barbies manage to overthrow the Kens by remembering how strong and independent and capable they are, that they're the rightful leaders of Barbie land, that they have great accomplishments such as being doctors and politicians. But at the same time, Barbie chooses to leave this life behind because it isn't meaningful. Then in the film's biggest self-own, instead of staying in the matriarchal society run by women, Barbie chooses to live in the patriarchal, male-dominated, oppressive real-world society which she had been decrying the entire movie as a terrible place wherein she was made to feel sexualized, unsafe, and objectified. It's laughable, really. One interesting aspect of the film is that it chose to promote the older waves of feminism in the sense that women are still regarded as women. And when I say for the most part, I, I mean that there is a transgender Barbie among all of the Barbies, although this is never explicitly pointed out, at least that I know noticed anyway. The film in a very weird way attempts to uphold and celebrate at least certain aspects of womanhood as opposed to trying to erase it completely in the way that we see it happening all around us at the moment. Like there is no such thing as womanhood, we're all just genderless and it's all a spectrum blah blah blah. But at the same time this brand of feminism in the movie doesn't believe in equality. After the Barbies manage to reclaim their matriarchy in Barbie land and they have all felt what it is like to be relegated to brainless arm candy by the Kens, and through this they realize that this is the exact same thing that they did to the Kens under their matriarchy and it wasn't a just or a fair thing, the Barbies, they still only agree to give the Kens minor positions of power in the new re-established matriarchy and they justify it by saying that they are doing the same thing to the Kens that real men do to women in the real world. Another interesting aspect of the film is that they are essentially playing two extremes against each other that are unfair. One side is the extreme, almost cartoonish patriarchy that is evil against women, and the other side is the matriarchy that is evil against men. And both are unfair because they don't allow the men or the women to fulfill their potential and instead resort to degrading and humiliating them. The movie, of course, ultimately sides with the women, decrying the matriarchal system as the good and just one, due to the fact that it is inherently a Marxist film and it believes that women are the revolutionary subject. The film believes that the current order is an evil straight and male order and especially a white order. Women are the victims and when you are a victim yourself you have a license to victimize others so it is therefore justified to overthrow and dominate the men. Naturally to every honest viewer who is watching the film this comes across as astonishing and completely unjust because we recognize that both sides are flawed. We understand that it isn't mankind who creates truth and gives himself the law. Things like law, order, and truth they don't come from man or woman, black people or white people, gay people or straight people. These things come from a sacred sphere, they come from God, and it's from this godly order that men and women get their roles. Those who rule are also those who serve because they are serving a higher order and purpose. If however you don't believe in this sacred sphere and you believe that the existing order has to be an invention of man or woman, black people or white people, gay people or straight people, then of course naturally it follows that you believe 
believe that society is being run by a particular group. And the solution isn't to go back to God's order, but to overthrow the group in power, in this case, straight white men, and to replace this group with your own dictatorship women. The Barbie movie, as ridiculous as it is, it is valuable in the sense that if you can see through the propaganda, you do realize that there really is no solution to this type of humanistic, materialistic thinking. I do think, sadly, that there are a lot of people who can't see through the propaganda, though. It's either going completely over their heads and then subconsciously taking root in their brains, or they agree with it wholeheartedly. My theater was 90% packed with teenage girls dressed in pink outfits who, instead of watching a family-friendly movie about a childhood toy, they were subjected to a deeply subversive, radical feminist film that not only degrades men, but degrades motherhood. And it tells young women that being in a relationship with men, which obviously in many cases leads to marriage, is much less important and meaningful than being a strong, independent woman who can conquer the world all on her own. The fact that Barbie is a comedy definitely helps to disguise just how nefarious this film is. Ryan Gosling's character, Ken, he genuinely was very funny, and pretty much every laugh in the theater during the entire movie was caused by his character. The film still is pretty horrible, though, and I wouldn't recommend it to anybody, especially impressionable teenage girls. I've read a lot of comments on Twitter where leftists are making fun of right-wingers, saying things like, why did you not expect Barbie to be woke? Did you expect Barbie to be some kind of stay-at-home housewife who homeschools her kids? No, of course that's not what we expected. That's never been what the Barbie doll is. I think most of us simply expected the movie not to be a man-hating pile of garbage. Don't waste your time watching. It. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video and would like to support my channel, you will find all of the relevant links to do so either in the top pinned comment or the video description. The most important of these is my Subscribestar page where I have a private Telegram chat group as well as group Discord calls for supporters. So if this sounds like something that is interesting to you, then please do sign up there. Thank you so much again for watching and I'll see you all soon.